Okay, so this is exciting because um, I want you to know I brushed my teeth and I took a shower for you. <laughs> wow, you did a lot more than I did. I took a really long walk today, so I actually just changed from my exercise clothes into my house dress, which I really love. And this will be my attire for the rest of the evening, and I have not showered yet today, but I have been showering every day. Nice. Well, I actually was just in Montauk, so Ooh. I was thinking of you. I, um, I had to drive out there and look at a house that yeah that Annette is staging and she needs some artwork for the walls and so I looked at this amazing amazing house where was it that's where I was I was on Cranberry Hill Road area um you know where the ditch plains turn is uh-huh okay further up. the next turn nice um yeah I hate to say the markers on the house were these like two giant Trump flags but they were not on, not on the house that she's staging, but the next door ones. Um, yeah. yeah. There's a house like that here in this neighborhood. It freaks me out. Well, it freaks me out because, like, if you, like, vote for whoever you want to vote for, but, like, yeah, don't, 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 don't fly a flag in my face. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, afterwards, because it's Earth Day, I thought, well, I, I have to go check out the ocean. Um, yeah. So I went out there and got blown to bits, but made a really great video for Earth Day. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, I want to see it. Is it on Facebook? Or yeah, it's on Instagram, Facebook. Okay. Yeah, we went, I've been, I mean, one of the best things about this whole thing out here, out in East Hampton, is that I've been, um, I've never spent more than a week at my house. And so I've been here now for, I don't know, five and a half weeks, six weeks. And so I've been taking all these incredible walks. I mean, all areas I'm sure you know well, but they're all new to me. I've been to... Massamac over in Shelter Island and to Shad, Shadrock, Shadrock in Montreal, Shadmore. Shadmore and Hither Hills. And today I went to Napi State Park. We, we met at Dover Yacht Club in Amagansett and walked up the beach past, you know, that kooky little lobster fish farm place. It's a really weird old, it's like a fishery. Yeah. Yeah. I have some artist friends that lived out there. Yeah. I love that place. I love that place too. So we walked on the beach all the way to there and then we went on the road and went further up to Nappy and it was great. I think I walked 17,000 steps today, which was the goal. <laughs> so I've been discovering all the areas. Wow, that's amazing. I was surprised at the beach. You know, they had signs for wearing masks and um, all of that, which, I mean, that makes sense. But also the news has been saying that Montauk has been crazy crowded. Uh, on the weekends. It's so funny actually you say that because my son who's here who's 19 I guess he'll be 20 in July he has a job lined up to work um, at a Montauk hotel for the summer and he was supposed to start April 1st was the plan he was traveling around the country this year and um, so he got back here April 1st and of course you know there was no job but now the guys are gearing up to open the hotel and he had a training by a zoom yesterday and um, I just asked him a few minutes ago what the deal was. And he said that they only have had 4% of their cancellations of their summer bookings. So they are still anticipating opening, just possibly slightly later. And you know, who knows? Yeah. Well, you know what's crazy? I, I didn't think about this. I was reading um, posts by other wolfers, which that's a whole other conversation we have to have. Um, just about different people's realities right now you know what because we live in a very particular otherworldly reality mm -hmm. um but we're super affected by this more than california is you yeah know, in oregon more than a lot of places and so i was looking up numbers because you know you can't really rely on testing numbers so i'm just looking at population and death numbers mm -hmm. and new york is crazy I mean, yeah. you're, you know, 8 million people, 10,000 people have died. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's amazing. It yeah, is. But Los Angeles is 10 million people and 600 have died. Really? Only 600 yeah. people in LA? Wow. It gets crazier. Where we live, which is Suffolk County, which yeah. goes all the way to, I don't know, Patchogue, like the other side of Riverhead, yeah. uh, which is about a million people, almost 900 deaths. So mm -hmm. 1 million people more than LA have died here. Wow. And, you know, people are like, well, that's, it's a different strain. Oh, it's people from New York. It, like, I don't know what it is. And I'm like, who can say? It's a lot of things, but. I'm really listening. I'm just taking these cookies out of the oven. 
No, that's <laughs> terrifying. I guess one of the questions is, is like, will it get that bad elsewhere? I don't know. I don't know because, you know, my parents, my whole family lives in San Francisco. Right. So I was looking at San Francisco numbers. Again, population is just under a million, about 800,000. We had 20 deaths. Oh my God. 20. And which makes me very happy because my dad yeah, and my mom right. was 80. And, yeah, and it's okay. kind of surprising actually given their proximity to Washington State and like, you know, why? It's surprising given everything. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I think we're all going to learn. The real question, I, mean, I think today has been one of the, every day is like a little different emotionally, I find. Like, you know, in a lot of ways, I think a lot of us who are super fortunate to have a place to be and um, have, you know, savings so they're not like completely, yeah. you know, we feel like it's kind of weirdly, like if you don't think about the outside world, it, it's often kind of pleasant, right? It's like we're cooking a lot, we're resting, we're with our families. Um, but then you have... I mean, A, you're just worried about the world, but then you also have days where you're like, I don't really understand how this is going to end. Like, I don't really understand where we're going to be in June, July, August. Like, a friend um, said to me today, we'll surely be out here all summer. Out here meaning in, you know, East Hampton or Springs or whatever. And I was like, really? Am I, am I going to keep, am I going to be doing this for four more months? This kind of, like, literally all I do is, like, clean, cook, walk, read. Yeah. Repeat. Well, I, I said to you today, do you think we could plan our like annual 4th of July party? He's like, there's not going to be a party. Yeah, that's the question is how do we go back to like, like our book parties, gallery openings, shopping in stores? Like I, I don't really, all of it. I mean, I don't know. Obviously it'll, it'll happen somehow. We will get through this. Um, and it's not like there's going to be a switch turned off, right? I guess it will be gradual. I guess it will. But it's it's weird. Well, there might be a switch turned off in terms of like, oh, you can leave your houses now. But you know, then you see an article that says this could be worse next winter, and you're like, oh my god, right? I can't even right. I can imagine we like think we're going back, and that we go back to normal life, and then we're suddenly back in this spot again in a few months, and we're all quarantined and locked down and hoarding toilet paper. Like, are we really going to do this again? Because that'd be really insane. I know. Yeah. Do you ever think? Well. You live in amazing place. I mean, your house is amazing, and it's very small. I, I have a lot of people here now, but yes, <laughs> it feels large with all of the view and all of the the yeah, air. Is. There's a lot of air. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, but do you ever think like, oh, is this where I want to stay? Like, yeah, I actually is this where I want to live. You know, I mean, you're a good person to talk to about this, right? Because you live out here. I. You know, so I've lived in, about where to live all the time. Right, right. You are. You're always thinking about moving. I mean, I've lived in New York my whole life. And in the last couple of years, I started to think about maybe living in California for a while. I spent six months. The only time I've ever not lived in New York is I lived in Vienna for a year when I was 18. And as an adult, I've always had a weekend place either in the Hudson Valley or out here. But I've always lived in the city. And um, Two years ago, I went and lived in LA for six months and loved it and then thought I might do that. And then I met a man and he's kept me in New York. And you know, New York is my home. But I've since I've owned this house like four years, I've always thought, oh, I hope at some point I get to spend an extended period of time here. And it just hasn't worked out. And now here I am. And I am really loving it. And I and I have to say, I went back to Brooklyn a few days ago. Um, I hadn't been back at all, and I went back to get my mail and clean my apartment and visit my boyfriend who's we've been kind of doing some back and forth and um and I really was not didn't want to be there like I really missed it you know you get used to I've been doing these daily walks and the air and the light yeah. and just being in nature the peacefulness it's made me realize maybe I really could do this I mean right now I have three kids or 320 somethings in my house but I don't know. It, it is making me wonder if maybe this will, I think for a lot of people, usher in some other way of living. And I don't know. Yeah. Well, and you've also created such an amazing online life for yourself. So you, you literally can and do work from anywhere. Yeah, I definitely can do that. And I was actually thinking about that also today. I was like, you know, it, it's, so like we created the community, like what, 
it's almost five years ago in October, um, this online community of women. And then we left Facebook last year, which was kind of a big dramatic thing. And lots of people were upset with me, but I kind of needed to, because I couldn't, I couldn't keep it up working for Facebook for free anymore. And so now we have this community that's a subscription base and, um, and it's still very much in early stages and it's just beginning to grow and who knows how this all will affect it kind of work-wise and economy-wise, although it seems to be stable. But, um, but yeah, it's true that I have this online community of friends. And so, you know, in addition to like my real life friends. So in some ways this, this quarantine, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of lovely in a lot of ways. I'm not sure. When I went home for two days, I looked in my closet because I, I came out here originally a month or six weeks ago for a weekend. So I didn't bring anything. And I actually hadn't been here basically all winter. So I had very few clothes here. And, um, and so when I went to Brooklyn, I gathered some clothes. But basically, I, get, I, I got grabbed a pair of jeans because I want to be able to assess my weight gain or not. Um, and, you know, some more pajamas. But everything else looked kind of idiotic. Like, what do I need all these things for? <laughs> like, That's interesting. It was kind of weird. It, it also made me wonder if, like, when all this is over, will I want different clothes? I, I don't know. It, it, I felt not in a bad way, but definitely removed from my life there, you know? So something has something big has shifted, and we should, shifted. Say, like, we should say what the community is because I think people want to know. But so that's actually how I met you. Um, I read about you in the New York Times, yeah. like, which is an, such a, not an obvious way to meet a person. No, but it's so weird. About, it's so funny. I, I, I've done this maybe three times in my whole life, where I read about someone, I'm like, I totally want to know that person. So I, of course, did what I do because I'm a super sleuth and found you on Facebook and some other places and thought, oh, we have all these friends in common. Of course we should know yeah. each other. Like, we already should have known each other, but we just totally. didn't. And the crazy thing was that, I don't remember if that article was five years ago. No, the article was in 2018. I think it was in like March. So I guess it was just two years ago. Really? Um, it feels like, oh, it feels like at least three. It feels like a long time, but no, because I started the community. So I, so I'll, for the listeners or watchers or whatever, I started a Facebook community in tw October of 2015. Um, and I called it, what would Virginia Woolf do? Which was kind of an inside joke about it really, it was, the idea was I wanted to create a space for me and my girlfriends to talk about aging and kind of like in a funny smart but very candid way so I wanted it to be just women so the idea was just women over 40 in a place to talk about feminism and sex and books and I called it what would Virginia Woolf do in a total moment of dark humor because most of my girlfriends are really smart feminists and big readers and Virginia Woolf killed herself in her 50s so the joke was like I'm getting older should I just throw in the towel and the group became very popular among a bunch of very smart, interesting women. And it became this kind of like secret destination. Originally it was closed, it was secret, then it was closed. Um, and then out of that, it grew. It eventually grew to like 32,000 women. And we started doing things very organically, like having events and cocktail parties and clothing swaps. And um, eventually we started a podcast and we, um, I wrote a book. So the New York Times article came out when I wrote the book. Because of the book. That's because of the book, exactly. Right. And, um, and wait, what was the point of this, this well, decision? So, oh, well, I was, I was going to say that I read about you and the, um, the other person mentioned in that article mm -hmm. was, I believe, Leslie Jane Seymour. Who, yeah. Because she has a the editor of More Magazine, which was one of my favorite magazines Me ever. Too. I had just been thinking, oh, I would really love, to, like, if I could think of my dream job, it was to photograph women mm. over 40 for More Magazine. Although, do you remember Mirabella? Oh, yes. Yes, oh my God, I, still, I still have the first issue of Mirabella. You do? I would love to read it. One day I'll come over and read it because I really wonder if it would hold up. Like I loved Mirabella. I also loved Moore, but Moore was never, Moore was always a little disappointing. I was super bummed when it shut down. Right. But Mirabella was, in my memory anyway, it was fantastic. In my memory too, because Moore, Moore was um, more compromising. To yeah, me. exactly. It was a little more Mirabella mainstream. Was like, I have a, you know what? I'll bet you if Mirabella was founded today, it would be a massive hit. I, I would hope so. But you know, it's actually funny to think about the distinction between Mirabella and Moore is not unlike the distinction in some ways between what would Virginia Woolf do and the Wolfer, right? Like, I mean, hopefully it will, will, will continue to change, but it is interesting. Like what would Virginia Woolf do was so surprisingly 
so fun and addictive and unexpected. And, and it was all these like super smart women. And we, it was the kind of thing where like you joined and it was like, oh yeah, if we didn't already have 20 friends in common, we should have, like it was, and it's still, I mean, then, you know, more, it grew bigger and like, you know, nothing ever stays the same. And when we left Facebook, we changed the name to the Wolfer, which is what the women call themselves. And it's smaller now. It's only, we have like 12,000 women registered to the platform, but it's only 5,000 women in the VIPs who, who subscribe. So who are in the conversation and they're great and they're really smart. And when I meet them in person, I always really like them, but it has at the moment, like one of the things we were just about to do, cause we just got our first investors. We were just about to start spending money on PR and digital marketing. And because we need to kind of curate and draw more. It's the difference between something being fully organic and planned, right? I mean, what would Virginia Woolf do was so completely organic. unexpected. And now the Wolfer is, it is a community for smart women over 40 and we're talking about real things. Um, but it does feel a little more mainstream. It's just, it's, it's, it's an interesting challenge from a business perspective. Um, we'll see. I mean, I still, I think it's incredibly needed and really, really useful. And I really love one of the nice things about the, um, about this crisis is we've started doing these Zoom cocktail parties um, like three nights a week on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they've been fantastic. Like I always find when I meet the women, I, I really, really like them and see the need that we're addressing. Um, but it's, a, it's, it's slightly bittersweet. To, it's like now five years in, right? Anything that becomes a business, anything that becomes, it's, it's, it's just always shifting. So I sympathize with Leslie Jane Seymour and more because it's it's hard to be everything to everyone. Yeah, well, she, I mean, more died, so they had to close it down, and so she was starting her own thing. Yeah, I literally had lunch with her the week before that article came out, and the week before I reached out to you. Oh, how funny! So bizarre, like the the timing. Yeah, of that that's happened. so cool. Um, now there are a lot. There are lots of people in the same space doing interesting things. Right? Well, I, I never ended up doing any. Um, I was thinking I wanted to do portraits for that. Uh, I forgot what she called it, the Covey Club is what Covey she Club. called it. Um, but it is. It's very curated and it's very uh, specific. Um, Hers is very. It's like a little C-suite. Or, I mean, now I've done obviously like a big survey of all these spaces for women our demographic, and you know Leslie's a little bit more focused on. Um, reinvention and she's aiming a little more toward kind of c-suite women gotcha and we're we're more um i'd say the common denominator in our community over 50 percent of the women in our community have master's degrees or above which i think is super cool yeah it's really neat um slacker in your community <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, I just, I got a master's degree very late in life a few years ago in like barely a field. So I don't know. Um, but, uh, but, and I think we have more economic diversity, you know, than some, some of these things are very much aimed, you know, they're more expensive. I mean, ours is really cheap. It's $35 a year and we're pretty much always running a $20 special. So it's not expensive. Um, but it is interesting to look at all the different communities and kind of, I wonder where it's going to go. Cause I do feel like when I started it, it was really just because I personally was going into perimenopause and wanted to talk about it. But it, I, there was obviously something in the air because now there, it's a whole thing, right? These, these, there's so many, there's Next Tribe, there's In the Groove, there's, there are all these communities and um, online things for women our, our age talking about menopause. You know, Gwyneth Paltrow is talking about menopause. So. Yeah. <laughs> Just, just get that drop over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that's interesting because I I'm not aware. Obviously, I've never looked any farther just because I adore you and I think what you you're doing is do. amazing. And I think that it took so much courage to move it off of Facebook. And yeah. I you know I think it did too. Sorry, I keep playing with my hair. It's funny to look at my hair. Um, and I, I haven't washed it in a couple of days. Um. I think that, you know, we all have our strengths and weaknesses, right? So courage to change is something I'm very good at. Sometimes I do it too quickly. Um, I can be, you know, I think there's that saying that sometimes that our strengths are also our, you know, our biggest strengths are also our strong, our biggest weaknesses. I can be very impetuous. Um, 
so there was really a, a year or two where I was really grappling with whether to just shut the community down. Like I wasn't really able to monetize it. I was spending all my time and money. I hired an assistant. So it was really taking, I mean, it took over my life in a fabulous way, but it was also super demanding. So I really thought about just shutting it down and moving on. And then I had to think about the way in which like I, I've had a bunch of careers in my life and I've had a bunch of marriages and I've lived in a lot of houses and like I do tend to kind of move through things and I thought I don't really want to leave this the women I've made a lot of amazing friends and the women have made amazing friends and uh so anyway I was left with the like well okay if I'm going to stay with this I have to figure out how to actually turn it into a business and so the decision to leave Facebook was hard but I but I'm really glad I got there and then I have to say after we left in October because I didn't know how it would feel like I was like would I really miss it and I mean it's definitely some of my nature also I'm not I, I'm not someone who looks back much but it has was really really liberating to leave Facebook like really liberating like even though I miss sometimes the super fun addictive like tenor of what would Virginia Woolf do the feeling of being I felt like literally like I was like on a hamster wheel and I, I was getting like hundreds of messages and notifications and people yelling at me and like it was just like non-stop like women and I, and I was doing it all for free right and I had a whole team of women who were working for me for free we were all so it was like this feeling of being like on a treadmill to nowhere um and I have to say from the second we shut down I, I was like that's that's a phase that's over and now we're in this new phase and we'll see if we can figure it out and it's been exciting it's it's really fun to own your own platform also like and to you know, it just feels it's it's an actual business and yeah, so it's been very good. It's been a good transition. That's really nice. So it feels yeah. it feels different. It feels very different. And and I do always have to, you know, I have to remind people because I think most people are not as comfortable with change as I am. And again, I don't think that's always such a great characteristic of mine, but it is a characteristic of mine. Um that I'm I just feel like nothing stays the same and we have to kind of embrace that. And the Wolf or two, like it feels certainly very different from the early days of Virginia Wolf. Um, but it also is going to keep evolving. Like one of the things that I've noticed that's been really fun to see is from when we left in kind of October, I think our official day off of Facebook was November 1st for the first few months, you know, there's also all the tech challenges of building an app and, um, fixing things and getting new features and so we have all these new features but it's been really interesting mostly to just see how long it takes to build a community naturally and like kind of that difference between organic and forest and um watching people become loyal to this like i was thinking actually if i closed this now i would miss it i don't think i would go back to facebook so it, it's interesting to think psychologically about our allegiance to community and what it means to people and it's been a fun challenge you know i still i don't know where it's going to go but it's been super interesting and like doing the design stuff and trying to make it look the way you want it to look and we feel like there's pr pretty good potential to get advertisers so that kind of stuff and hi Alyssa. my son's girlfriend just came in i'm doing a zoom call with my friend tanya <laughs> oh, I made oatmeal cookies and the oatmeal banana chocolate chip, yeah. gluten free. Because you always say you're not a cook, but there you are. Well, that's been a really fun treat to this. I'm not a cook. I'm actually a terrible cook, and my son, the Which boyfriend, an amazing hostess, I must say. Like I'm, I always say. In fact, I used to say on my Match.com profile, I'm an excellent hostess and a terrible cook. Like well, I love you throw together a dinner party like nobody's business. Totally, and I get so, I'm not stressed. Like I could have a dozen people for the weekend. Like I love having people over, but I really am not a great cook. I mean, partly it's honestly just because. When my kids were little, I used to cook a lot. I think I'm just naturally not a great cook. Like I don't like following recipes, just like I don't like following naps. I get kind of impatient. But um, I had this amazing, amazing housekeeper when the kids were really little who was a great cook. And I just got really, I had four kids. I had a lot of kids. And she, she's still with, she only works for me very, very part time now. Um, but she's been with me for 20 years and she's amazing. And so I, she would, I would just be like, what's the point in me cooking? Like, you're so much better than I am at it. So increasingly I cooked less and less. Um, and I, I do terrible things. Like I burn things. You never get what you need. And that's, that's a more important skill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Um, but during this quarantine, I've been cooking. Like, so right now I have a mushroom broccoli quiche in the oven. Wowza. And I made oatmeal cookies. So I'm kind of enjoying it. And now my boyfriend is a super good cook. So that's also like another reason not to cook. Um, but anyway, so I'm enjoying playing with it a little bit. Wow. Yeah. Um, Who cooks in your house? Both of you. I, oh, I do all the cooking. You do all the cooking. Which is hilarious because that first time we met, you came over and I was, in fact, I thought of that recipe today because we were going to do this call. I was like, I need to make that again. That was so good. That recipe is amazing. And actually two of my friends, my friend Robin and then my boyfriend John have both made it since you made it. So it's the, it's from the Jerusalem cookbook, right? And it's the it's lentils. It's Jerusalem cookbook. And I forget what the meat, the thing is called, but it's lentils with like a cinnamon flavor and crispy onions. That's like the key. Yeah. Thing. The onion, it's so good. See, I could never make something like that. That's beyond me. Well, that one, that that one's definitely a you got to follow the recipe kind of yeah. um, thing which is weird I was making it I guess for Deb's like potluck party or something yeah I mean it was probably we must have met it's probably about two years ago like after the New York Times article yeah. and I drove over over to your house in Sag Harbor and yeah. met you and, and then you thought I was a cook and I'm like oh I barely cook but okay <laughs> today I was going like to like level nine it was very, it was very, very impressive. Um, I do feel like there are things like I always feel slightly like there's something wrong with me that I can't cook. It's like a little weird that I don't cook well. It's like a slight, I mean, I think it kind of fits with my personality. There's a way in which I can be very distracted. And I think it's that like, I will burn things. I will like oversalt things. Like I'm, <laughs> it's really lame. Like, I'm surprised that, I mean, Sydney can do everything and I, he can't cook really. I mean, he can make eggs and and I was totally duped when I first met him. And, and, you know, he made me this beautiful sort of omelet egg thing for breakfast. Oh, nice. We spent the night together. And I was like, oh, and he can cook too. And I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> this one off. that's it. <laughs> that was the whole well, I have our roles. It's very I'm, I'm a very good shopper and cleaner. I'm an obsessive cleaner. So I feel like. He's the obsessive cleaner, which makes me very happy. Yeah, yeah. It's gotta have gotta have one of those. Is your son with you, by the way? No, he's in Boston. Yeah, he's, okay. He's in Boston. Uh, uh, with his friends. He's been staying busy. He's with his friends. He actually wanted to stay with his roommates because one of them is graduating, and he just yeah. didn't want to like, you know. I have the same issue. I have two of my kids are here. One is my one of my daughters is still in California with her roommate. They're seniors at Scripps but the roommate doesn't want to come back to New York, even though they're both from New York. So they're staying in their off-campus apartment for now. And um, eventually, sometime in May, we'll come back. And then my oldest daughter lives in DC and she's like a grown up. she's 26. So she's with her boyfriend in her apartment. Right. Yeah, I mean, there've been moments where Alex wanted to come back and yeah. he sees the waves or he sees his friend surfing. He's like, I want to come back. Was his plan, is his plan to come home for the summer? Well, he has an internship up in Boston that starts, and it looks like it will start, um, oh, because wow. it's, it's with the Boston Consulting Group, but it starts in July. But his plan was to, he well, he, originally he was supposed to go to Moscow with his dad and mm. do some sort of midterm internship in Moscow, but his, his dad can't even leave his apartment. I mean, he's on like 100% lockdown because he's over 65. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a trip I was going to take. So my, I have twins who are seniors in college, the girls. On the same day as Alex. Oh, that's right. That's <laughs> right. So um, I was going to take them to Iceland in June. And we have this trip that I've paid for. I mean, like so many people. And I assume it's canceled. I haven't really dealt with it. I guess we'll just see where we are. Why? No, it's the first week of June. Oh, yeah. No. Probably not going to happen. Probably not going to happen. It's so weird, Tanya, to think about. So weird. Like, like even things like exchanging money in stores or having people over for dinner or in Brooklyn. So I live, I raised my kids in Brooklyn Heights and I live now in Dumbo. But a lot of my friends live in like brownstones in Brooklyn. And they're, a lot of them are doing a thing where they're having like socially distanced um, cocktails on their stoops. So someone will sit at the top and someone will sit at the bottom. I have not seen that out here. Like, am I going to have you and Annette over this summer and we'll all sit six feet apart? Like, I don't really get how this is going to work. I think we were sitting six feet apart around your fireplace anyway. <laughs> That's true. But not when we had dinner in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But we could have eaten, well, except it was so windy. 
it was very windy that night. But I, I, yeah, I don't know. Or the beaches, like there's a big question because apparently I think it's been pretty determined that the New York City beaches will be closed this summer. But apparently someone, a friend of mine who's like a deputy mayor in Saltaire in Fire Island told me that the problem is if they deem lifeguards if lifeguards are not deemed essential workers, like if the city beaches are closed and lifeguards aren't necessary, then will they have to close the beaches in the rest of the state? Like, will we be allowed, or maybe the beaches will be open, but there'll be no lifeguards? I don't really know. I don't know. Wow. Well, it's funny because I actually don't go to the beach right now. And um, mostly because I know so many people are going and I just don't want to be around mm -hmm. a lot of people. Yeah. I feel like I'm out with the dogs. Um, yeah. So out, where do I walk the dogs? So I go, I go on a whole new set of trails that I never, ever used to take. As I was driving to Montauk, I passed one of my regular trails. Mm -hmm. There must have been 15 cars parked really? at, the, at the entrance. And I thought, well, I'm never going there. <laughs> wow. I haven't seen that many people. I have to say that surprises me. I'm trying to think. Oh, a lot of people out. I mean, my street right now normally has no one on it. I would say I watch people come by every single day walking yeah. and I have there are at least 10 trucks on the street right now wow which are I mean, you know, where I live Gerard Drive is a big walking street yeah. so there are always people walking here but it, it doesn't make me I don't feel particularly I mean I stay whatever six ten feet away from people but I guess it will become more challenging as the weather gets nicer and people just get more and more restless yeah well and I used to be such a master at going to the beach in off hours anyway so mm -hmm. I probably would just go back to that, which is super early, super late. Yeah. Forget the middle of the day. You're lucky you have dogs. I have, you know, my old dog Muffin, but Muffin's really old. She's 15. And now in my bedroom's upstairs here and my son is in the little out building and um, Muffin's getting too old to go up and down the stairs and she loves the kids. So she's basically been taken away from me. I never see her. She's with Bruno and I can't take her on walks because she's too old. So I'm starting to think about getting a dog. Oh. And I'd like to go to ARF and get a rescue, but... And by appointment, you just have to call? Yeah. And I've been thinking about it. I've been looking at their website. I kind of want to get a poodle. And there's a woman in Port Washington, a poodle breeder. And she has a, a batch of, what is it? A litter due, a batch of puppies. A litter due next week. But then I can't decide, is it like insane to get a puppy? Like the work involved in a puppy a lot of work i also feel like i feel like the rescue dogs need a lot of love right now yeah yeah my I children should... are rescue dogs and they they know they're the luckiest dogs on the planet how, how old were they when you got them uh sparky was one year mm -hmm. and spencer was supposedly five months i don't believe that i think he was okay. close did to you get them here at arf no, no, no. We lived in Atlanta at the time. So they both, we actually, our first dog came from the, um, the ASPCA. Mm -hmm. We got him on election day. We named him Obama. Aww. Two days later, he died. Oh my God. I didn't even have words like for that feeling of. Oh my God. So How did he die? Um, sorry? How? What happened? Um, he had parvo, which is like, I didn't even know what that yeah. was at the time. Know. You know, it's a, I guess it's a virus or some it's a heartworm thing, right? Like, a like that. So he probably had it when we got him, we picked him up and he was like super tiny and we got a bunch of treats for him. And, um, and I just thought he was having a reaction to whatever, some food or stress or whatever. We took him back. Now this is, this is also, I think if I had it to do over again, this is the mistake I wouldn't have repeated. We took him back to the ASPCA and they said, oh, he's in guarded condition and oh, he's not going to make it. Well, if we take him to, hit, take him to a private vet, oh, I we see. probably would have like him. Yeah, cause spent the money to save his life. But I mean, they treat dogs like disposable. Oh, and, God. All right. I'm going to go back on the ARF. What, you're right. I should just, of course, get a rescue. And I think I really want to do it because I've been taking these crazy long walks and I want a dog with me. And I miss having a dog in my bedroom and I, I just miss it so and also you get to feel the energy of the dog a little more as because that was a huge part of it i never was going to get a second dog and alex was going to a baseball game with eason and saw the dog and said oh mommy's so cute and you know can we adopt him and i wasn't there they sent me a picture and i said it depends on how sparky reacts mm -hmm. and i said we'll foster him for a week 
Okay. And see how it goes. So, because yeah. you, you still want Muffin to feel okay. And, of course. Um, no, that's a really good idea. I can see if I can foster it and bring it home okay. and see if it's like, that's a great idea. I'm going to call them or email them right after we get up. I, I really want to do that. I love you to just foster, even if you don't fo like finally adopt, just yeah. fostering some dogs right now because they must be all just cooped up. And yeah. Yeah. I don't know. My dogs are like such a integral part of everything. I know. Muffin is too. I, I mean, I'm, I know Muffin's happy with Bruno and his girlfriend. And I mean, she's here. She's just with them all the time. But, um, but I do miss her. You miss the company of one when you're used to it. Yeah. Although, I mean, I, I miss the being able to travel at a moment's notice. Well, that's the thing. My, my life involves, I'm pretty much always going between Brooklyn, Riverdale, where John lives, and out here. So any dog I have has to be very comfortable in the car. Um, and then I do travel. If I'm, so you're right. The travel stuff is a real pain in the ass. Yes. But, yes. Um, yeah. Because there's, I mean, there's that part of me that just wants to pick up and go to Portugal. and uh, Particularly if Trump wins again. Oh, my God. It's just... So, you know, I wanted to ask you about that because you, so you're like the mama hen of the community of 5,000 women who are not, they're not all liberal. I mean, no. you know, you, Although, you I have to say when we were on Facebook, we had a really strict no politics rule mm -hmm. and we had a lot of conservative women. And basically what I would always say is like, we want women of all kinds, like all women go through perimenopause and menopause and have health issues and sex issues that we want to be able to talk about if you start spouting off like against abortion or start saying how much you love trump you're going to get a lot of shit and you're going to end up being asked to leave like that's just going to happen but if you can be in the group and kind of you know we're, we don't overtly talk about politics unless the idea, the rule was unless it intersected with feminism so it was tricky when hillary was running for example i mean there, a lot of feminist issues obviously come up in politics but we managed to do it but when we left for the app we decided because we were going into the 2020 election, we should create a subgroup. You know, we have all these subgroups. So you can join the community and you can, you can follow everything or you can just follow New York and book club and sex talk or um, money matters and now politics. So we created a politics subgroup. Um, and I have to say, I feel like the community right now is even more aggressively liberal than it used to I mean, we've always been a liberal community I mean as I said in my book like we were founded by a bunch of women in Brooklyn like you know it is what it is I I want the diversity um, so I won't you know we it's not like but I don't I don't think we'd go as far as say to create a Republican subgroup on the, we just wouldn't so it's right. you know it's a fine balance like we are basically a group of liberal women right and I loved I I, I remember a couple of conversations um, generally saying like is everyone here white and and you would chime in and you're like hello no 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 i say the app i need to check my quiche for two seconds but um we're pretty reasonably diverse we recently i'll be right back we recently did a um, survey monkey to see and our diversity numbers are pretty much the same as they were on facebook we always want more women of color um oh i think this is done wait this looks kind of good i think Hold on, I'm just gonna take this out of the oven. I think I'll, I'll come over for some quiche delivery to your front door. It's extremely, I have to show, wait, I have to show this to you. I'm kind of impressed, let's see. So, there's wow. my quiche. Wow, that are my cookies. Oh. I know, right? That looks kind of good. It looks really good. I'm gonna eat a cookie. Okay. Did you make the, the crust also? No, I did not. There are these awesome, I can make a crust if I have a Cuisinart, but I don't have one here. But there are these, um, you know, there are those pre-made crusts that like already in crust shape, but there's also this Pillsbury thing that you can buy that's a rollout crust. Oh, right. And I really like it. You just literally unroll it in your pie pan. Oh, nice. And it's quite delicious, so. Um, so yeah, the women are mostly. So, so do, do your demographics kind of mirror the whole country or not? No. And actually, since we left Facebook, I have to admit, we're a little richer. So definitely very smart. And I think the intelligence thing is the same as when we were on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, we're pretty much 50-50 uh, urban, suburban, very few rural. 
I think it's like 6% rural. Um, the average age is 56, I think, which is slightly higher than it was at different points on Facebook. Wow. Like I used to say two years ago, it was around 52. I'm 50, but it would make sense if it's slightly going up because my friends have always been older. I had kids really young. So if the core group are kind of my cohort, it kind of makes sense that they're edging up a little. Um, I mean, we still we have plenty of women in their 40s. I mean, we're definitely between 40 and 60 is the bulk of the women. Yeah. Um, but I always like having the older women as well. Um, I can't remember the exact financial statistics, but it, we're definitely more in the household income above 150 than we were before on Facebook. Um, and... What are the other things we asked? Gay, straight, we have a decent number of gay women. Um, the racial disparity probably is not that far off from the country, but I really do want it to be more. We're something like 85% white or something. So it's pretty white and it feels, I mean, one of my concerns right now is it feels too white. We have a lot of really interesting women of color and some Asian women, but we really need more. In fact, the publicist that we're about to hire is black and I've done that for a reason. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Okay. These are pretty good. The cookies? They're pretty good. They're not great. This is the thing. When I cook, like, it's always like <laughs> pretty good, but. But it never knocks your socks off. <laughs> no, these need like a little more vanilla or something. You're not, you're not vegetarian, right? No. Although. Just trying to be. Boyfriend is such a good cook. Mm -hmm in the last three or four months has been only cooking vegetarian right. and it's been so good and easy. So I've been kind of, and I've gone through phases. I've been vegetarian in my life. So I'd say I'm definitely still eating cheese, but not much meat. And there's so much good fish out here. So I've been going to the fish market every few days. You remember though, when you were having the dinner party and we were coming and Annette and Hans were coming and, and you were asking who eats what and literally like no two people could eat the same. That was hilarious. It was like, I don't eat dairy. I don't eat fish. I don't, you know, it was really so she's, she's the vegetarian and Sydney doesn't eat fish. And I love fish, but can't eat meat because I have the meat allergy. Oh my God. We were like a, and then, you know, I didn't, I don't know if we thought of this the day that it happened, but did you realize that all three of us were uh, like mixed race cu couples? Mm, I didn't. I, I don't think we did comment on it, but you're right. It's it funny. It occurred to me today as I was remembering, like the last time I saw you. That is actually really funny. I didn't think of that. Isn't it funny. No, and no one commented on it. I don't think. Wait, how can Sydney not eat fish? That sucks. Um, I think because when he was sort of force fed it when he was a kid, so it's not it, mm -hmm. it's a, like personal gag reflex. You know, mm -hmm. he can't even stay, like if I cook it, he thinks it smells awful. Wow. They want to eat it, which is crazy. Like if you're from Brazil, you'd think it's all like half fish half the time or what? Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. I haven't seen Annette. I need to call her. I've seen the nudie on Instagram on other kind of websites. <laughs> they must oh. be doing licensing deals with other. No, people. no, 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 no. The other website thing is a problem that's a it's a counterfeiting problem people are copying them oh that sucks because the because the kickstarter was so successful mm -hmm. um boom that's how you find yourself a copycat mm -hmm. so you know, you know have you ever bought something on instagram and you're like god that looks great oh my god it's 20 dollars. really it's so cheap and the quality it's, is terrible it's so cheap and then it arrives and it comes in a package yeah. with like chinese writing and it came from somewhere in china and and you're like how could they have possibly photographed this to make it look like that? And you realize it's not the same thing. I actually always think of you when I think about buying something super cheap because you always chastise me in the group for, oh. I, can, I can definitely, in that oh, same way, like I like change. I can be a total impulse shopper. Yeah. And you're right. It's never worth it. It's always a bad idea. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Uh, so a friend of mine is a writer. Uh, she's a fashion writer and she wrote a book about um, disposable fashion. Mm -hmm. um, and basically the damage it's doing to the entire planet. Well, she now, she just wrote an article, I wanna say it was for British Vogue or the Washington Post. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was exactly about this topic. Hmm. And also the trickle down of what's happening right now and how it's affecting like women in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. um, because- That's a good subject, yeah. 
right? And like, apparently H&M just closed. I didn't know this. Um, really? Yeah. Like, I don't know if it like closed, closed, but I wow. I'll see the article and, and I'd love to speak, have a conversation with Dana anyway, but her name is Dana Thomas. Um, she, she, she's a very good writer. And she also, she also wrote a book about, um, Wait, she's not black, is she? I went to a high, sc high school with a Dana Thomas. No, 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 no. Um, white, former model. Um, I've known her like 25 years or whatever. Um, from originally California, but DC when I met her. She, she used to write at the Washington Post. Um, she moved to Paris when she got married. Uh, like she met her husband the same night that I met my husband. The four of us mm -hmm. were actually out at Obar partying. and. Mm -hmm. That's God, Obar, that's hilarious. Obar, remember Obar? Yeah, we're old. That's so funny. If you're old, you remember. Um, anyway, it's a really, um, her first book was about luxury and it, it was called Deluxe, How Luxury Lost Its Luster. And the second one I think is called Fashionopolis or something, something like that. Hmm. That's what she was referencing. Anyway, so the comment I made on her post today was what, and she said that the, Workers in Bangladesh were getting 97, equivalent of $97 a month mm -hmm. for the work they were doing to create the clothing that like all of us are consuming, like, bah, 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 bah. Yeah. and I said, it's such a shame we can't just cut out the middleman and give those women $97. Like, right, exactly. I, I, if I had that money, I would be giving them $97 a month to not do what they were doing. And just, we don't need the clothes. We don't need the middlemen who are like, I think that's part of what's happening right now is the getting rid of these structures in society where some people are paid nothing to do a thing and other people are profiting just inordinately yeah. off of that. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, I agree with you completely. And the, t the taking advantage of people in that way yeah. has to fall apart. But it is a complicated balance, right? Like I agree right now in this quarantine, for example, I mean, we're all spending so much less money, right? Most of us are just really spending money on groceries. And it's great to realize how little we need. I mean, you know, we're not getting our nails done. We're not getting our hair. We're, we're, we're not going out shopping. We're not making impulse purchases. But then the effect, of course, of that on the economy and the world at large is scary. It's, it's, all, it's complicated to understand. I mean, I, fully agree we should not be taking advantage of women and children in yeah. developing countries to make shit clothes that we're going to throw away but i don't totally know what the you know what the answer is well but one of the things if you think about it if you think about your list of of what's important to you and what you want going forward mm -hmm. i'll bet you it has more to do with self-care and paying attention to what you eat mm -hmm. um your your hair your nails your body like it doesn't have to be about more clothing. It, it's about self care. Yeah, so yeah. That would involve people, and that would involve, and also art. Like I don't know. I have this personal thing where I've bought in a month. I've bought groceries and three pieces of art. Oh, how nice! It. That's it. great. I bought a painting right before this all started, and now it hasn't been able to be delivered, and I was really looking forward to it. But I'll get it eventually. Oh yeah. yeah, I've mostly been like I've been buying some things on Amazon that are it's mostly been you're right home and beauty things. Like I've been doing, you know, face masks and. But I feel like so I feel like a lot of people that have been overlooked are going to be elevated. For example, teachers. I mean, teachers are doing amazing things right now. Amazing how hard they're working right online, now. Online, I think is is going to be a whole new like mushroom. Yeah of possibility because you can record a class and yeah and no absolutely i know my my one of my daughters is starting graduate school in september for teaching and yeah it's a big deal so yeah so why can't teachers be like musicians you know you get you get a two cents every time your class is played or something Whatever yeah that is um so teachers body workers like i think the massage therapists of the world are going to be very busy after this i think anyone who like coaching uh, people who deal with trauma and therapists, all those people are going to be so much more valuable in our yeah. society. I, hope so so. I think it's just the stuff. I think it's the, the Walmart crap of the world mm -hmm. is what needs to go away. And, yeah. and, you know, think about how big and wealthy the owners of Walmart are mm -hmm. and for what, like, 
No, it, I can't it really agree disproportionate way. It, I yeah. think it's wrong. Yeah. So that, and yeah. And it's not like the people working there are so happy either. Like, so those aren't necessarily jobs that, I, it's so funny because I can't tell you how many times I think about Malala and mm -hmm. you know, her whole mission is like to get the whole world educated, right? And God, the more I think about that, the more I think that's like a really worthy where is she now? How old is she? What is she doing now? Uh, she is, let's see, she's a year older than Alex, but she's the same class. So she would be, oh wait, except, well, no, then Alex got all messed up in his schedule. I think she might be about to graduate. Okay. Anyway, she's at Oxford. Um, mm -hmm. She's 22. And I don't, I have no idea what's next. Maybe she'll come and do one of my conversations with me. That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. We should definitely um, get to do that. But, but, you know, she's part, like, she's part of such an organization. Uh, and how long have you been doing these conversations? Three weeks. <laughs> fun. That's so fun. Just, you know, I'm such a behind the scenes person. It's not my thing to be on camera. It's nice. Um, you look great. But, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I realized, and, and it's funny because I was in a class before this all started, and it was a class about branding, and I've had a big question mark in my head for years. Like, am I going to keep being a photographer? Like, mm -hmm. is, like isn't there more than this? Because I feel like there is, but I don't know what it is. And it feels, it feels like not enough to call myself just a photographer. Mm -hmm. But... One of the things I've learned in the deep dive work of doing the branding class is connecting is my thing. That's always been my thing. I love connecting with people. I love connecting people to each other. I love setting people up. I, yeah, you and I are similar in that way. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it, yeah. Like what you do is like fascinating and beautiful to me. And mm -hmm. I have always done it with a camera, but it turns out I can do it without a camera. Like yeah. I never needed the camera. Yeah, uh, because cool. that's how I feel about photography anyway. I feel like photography is the um, the photograph is the byproduct of the connection, but the connection has to happen first, mm -hmm. and then you can have a photo. Right, and and then sometimes you don't take a photo. Right, you know, so then it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so that's for me. That's how the so for instance, like you know, when I showed up at your house and. 15 minutes later, we were done, and you were like, oh my god, that was fast. <laughs> that was fast. It was great. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. It's when you already have the connection. Yeah, when you already have a connection, you know each other, it's kind of, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, and plus, I even knew the house, so I could even visualize, you know, even as I walked in the door, I was visualizing where I thought it would happen. It didn't, it, it didn't turn out how I expected, but it doesn't matter. Right, like, right, right. No, it's very cool. It's kind of magical. We just went to your bedroom and threw clothes all over the bed. And okay. then I was like, this, that, the other, boo, 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 boo. And, you know, that yeah. chair. Okay, boom. <laughs> We're done. Plus, you're easy. Like, you're easy because you're already open. You're already a connector. You already, like, you've been photographed before. You, like, I, I don't want to say you're an extrovert because you're probably both. Yeah, I'm probably both, but I'm also, I am pretty, I'm not that vain. Like, I don't really worry that. I mean, I have to say I was getting a headshot. I wanted some good pictures, yeah. but I'm not that, like, I don't know. I just figure I'm 50, or like 50 years old. Like, it is what it is. Like, whatever. <laughs> like, I didn't put any makeup to do this with you today. I'm, you know, I'm a little, I like it when I look good. I'm very happy when those pictures, like, I love those pictures. That one of me laughing is so great. But, but yeah, I don't spend that much time thinking about yeah. that stuff. And that's, that's actually a factor of um, women getting older anyway. Although I think there's also a, there's a peak and probably a, a curve down on the other side. But um, I, that's one of the reasons I love photographing women who are, I'm not even going to say over 40. I'm going to say over 50. Yeah. Um, because 40 is still hanging on. 40 is starting, so starting to seem very young. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching last night this new Netflix show, Black AF, Black as Fuck. Oh, yeah. You know, the guy who did Mixed and Blackish. And um, he and his wife in the show, it's Radhika Jones and I can't remember the guy's name, Ken 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 Kenya Barris or something. And they're both like 45. 
44, 45. And yeah, there's a big difference between 44 and 50. <laughs> or, yeah. or at least, a, you know. Which is cool because I, I was not happy in my 40s. I feel like I lost the whole decade. I feel like it just went, it went by. I wasn't in the right relationship. I wasn't myself. Um, I just wasn't growing or blossoming or anything. And my 30s were my bad, worst decade, I think. My 40s were getting better. Yeah, I just feel like, thank God they exploded the way they did because I, I needed some kind of wake up call. Otherwise, I was like just marching to my death. Oh. And, and it just felt, ugh, it felt horrible. It felt like, really, is this all there is? Like your beauty is behind you. Your, your achievements are behind you. It's all behind you. You know, your peak is behind you. And then, you know, and then I turned 50 and I was in a, I wasn't even in a new relationship. I, I was in a new relationship with myself. Yeah. And oh my God, I just felt like I turned a corner and all of a sudden all those people who said your fifties could be your best decade. Yeah. I started to believe them. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, there's no, I mean, I'm definitely so much saner and happier. I mean, so much so than I ever have been. I, I agree with you. I and mean, there are other things that are like anything there's good and bad. I mean, uh, you know, we'll never be as young and beautiful as we once were. We're never going to have all the possibility in front of us that we once did. Um, but there's so much to be said for just feeling so much better in your skin and kind of knowing who you are and knowing what you want and not being so afraid. I mean, all that stuff that we carried around when we were younger is gone. It's a big difference. It's something like, it's something like having, having the baggage and not being afraid to carry it. Yeah. As opposed to like trying to stuff everything in a suitcase and pretend that you don't have yeah, it. Yeah, totally. I think a big thing for me, younger, I was so, I had so much fear and anger and fear what turned into anger. And it was just like a lot of, um, just a lot of stuff I didn't know or I didn't understand about myself. It, it took a long time. And obviously we'll keep growing and learning. And But the, the sense of centeredness, I think, I feel now, and I think I would say that's true for most women I know, is... Yeah. much much better at this point which i think is why it makes it so easy to be in the wolfer community and make instant friends i mean i think that's person, right every single person i meet i remember i met sherry uh sherry brennan in yeah. la first time i met her and we just like met for a drink at the bel-air hotel and she looked so amazing and yeah Cool. No, and it's really great. Even when you meet these people and like, it's not necessarily someone like Sherry comes from a completely different background than we do, right? She's from Iowa. She's a corporate person. She worked for Fox forever. We're different in a, in a lot of fundamental ways, but there's this shared kind of um, understanding and intimacy that I, I either comes out of being in the community or it comes out of who's drawn to the community. I'm not sure which comes first, but it's true. You meet these women and you instantly feel like you have a new Instant. friend alliance it's like, really awesome Denise and I, I I love Denise in San Francisco oh Denise is amazing oh my god and she, and she will she will say to anyone like, I have friends at this stage of my life because of the wolfer yeah she's she's amazing I completely agree with you it's like I mean it's so rare you meet someone in the community that you don't feel that way about it's wild yeah you know, the first time I met her she I she came to meet us. Oh, because Annette was doing a thing um, for Nudie mm -hmm. at my friend's lingerie store in Corte Madera. Oh, okay. Denise comes in. I end up taking like topless pictures of her. Yeah. <laughs> just, Not surprising. Like, hi, I just met you. Oh, whip off your shirt and let's take some photos. And she ended up putting them on Facebook. And I was like, ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's great. Like every person you attract has such beautiful energy and I, I think that's I think a lot of it is you you're you are uh, like a magnet a magnet and a star at the same time so you're you're putting your rays out and you're also pulling such good people in and that's oh, thank you that's excellent nice. quality to have thank you so I should probably let you your quiche huh <laughs> I, it's, it's pretty it's like sinking a little I hope it's good we'll see I just remembered the good thing about the the oatmeal cookies is I only made six of them and the dough is in the fridge so I have the opportunity to make it better so I'm gonna work on how would you make it better I think maybe I'll put some vanilla and if they need a little bit more flavor maybe I'll put some rum in them this is again why I'm not a good cook I'm like oh I'll just like 
<laughs> so ridiculous. Oh my god. Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> you know, this is why people love you. <laughs> I love you. You're just like it's how it is. It's love how it is. Call. It'll be fine. Well, this was so fun, sweetie. I love talking to you. This yeah, was really this great. Awesome fun. I will uh I'll keep you posted when it's posted. It'll be like Okay. All right, and we'll see each other soonish. We'll be out here. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll let you know when I'm walking down Gerard Drive. <laughs> okay, yeah, of course. Definitely do that. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. All right. Bye, sweetie. I'll talk to you later. Take, Take care. care.